Hey guys, welcome to Easy Academy. Today we're going to be learning about something called Le Chatelier's Principle. So what Le Chatelier's Principle basically states is that a system at an equilibrium will shift its equilibrium point when disturbed by a stress or things like changes in temperature, volume, concentration, etc. We'll go over all of that later in order to relieve that stress. So basically you disturb a system at an equilibrium with a stress. It's gonna now shift its equilibrium point in response to that stress in order to try to relieve it or try to nullify it. So what is a system in the first place? Well, a system is basically a chemical reaction or equation going back and forth. So basically the reactants turning into the products and the products turning back into the reactants or what we call a forward reaction and a reverse reaction. So in this example right here, the forward reaction would be sodium and fluorine combining to become sodium fluoride. And then the reverse reaction would be the product turning back into the reactant, which is sodium fluoride, decomposing back into sodium and fluorine. So now how do we know if a system is at an equilibrium? Well, in order for a system to be at an equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction has to equal the rate of the reverse reaction. So basically sodium and fluoride, fluorine has to combine to become sodium fluoride at the same rate that sodium fluoride is decomposing back to sodium and fluorine. So if this is true, then we know that the system here would be called at an equilibrium. So now let's look at how the equilibrium shifts as we change the concentration of reactants and products with an equation. So now we're using the same chemical equation as the previous example. So we know that this equation right here is at an equilibrium, which means the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. So now let's look at the visual representation and let's determine what happens to the equilibrium point as we add reactants and as we remove reactants. So as we add reactants, we can see from the visual representation we know that sodium has to collide with fluorine in order to become sodium fluoride. So if we add more reactants, for example, sodium, if we add more sodium to the mix, now suddenly there's a lot higher chance for sodium fluoride to become created because there's, we added more sodium to the mix. So now there's a higher chance that a sodium is going to collide with the fluorine. Now because of this, sodium fluorine is being created at a faster rate. The forward reaction is at a faster rate than the reverse reaction, which means the equilibrium point shifts to the right because sodium fluorine is being created faster than it's being decomposed. Now what happens when we remove reactants? Now as we remove reactants, for example, let's remove two sodiums right here. Now there's a lot lower chance for sodium fluoride to become created because there's only one sodium here to fly around and try to collide with fluorine and try to become sodium fluoride. So basically what we say is that the equilibrium point shifts to the left because suddenly the forward reaction is a lot slower than the reverse reaction. Sodium fluoride isn't being created as fast as it's being decomposed, which means the equilibrium point shifts to the left. So now let's see how the equilibrium point shifts as we change the concentration of products. So as we add products, or add more sodium fluoride to the visual representation here, if we add another sodium fluoride, now we can suddenly see there are more sodium fluorides to be decomposing into sodium and fluorine now because of this, we say that the rate of the reverse reaction has gotten faster because there are simply more sodium fluorides to be decomposing into sodium and fluorine. Now because of this, we realize that the rate sodium and fluorine is decomposing has suddenly gotten faster than the rate sodium and fluorine are combining to become sodium fluoride. Now because of this, we say that when we add products to the equation, the equilibrium point shifts to the left because it's decomposing faster than it could be composed. Now let's see what happens when we remove products. So 
if we remove products, if we remove sodium fluoride from the equation, we see now suddenly there are a lot less sodium fluorides to be decomposing into sodium and fluorine. Now because of this, we say that the rate of the reverse reaction or the rate of sodium fluorine decomposing back into sodium and fluoride, fluorine has become a lot slower. So because of this, the rate of the forward reaction has suddenly become a lot faster than the rate of the reverse reaction. So it's decomposing slower than the rate it's being composed. So it's being composed faster than it's being decomposed. Now because of this, we say that the equilibrium point would shift to the right because it's being composed faster than it can be decomposed. However, we have to remember that when we change the concentration of reactants and products, it only affects the equilibrium. The equilibrium only shifts if the thing we're changing is either aqueous or if it's a gas. It won't affect anything that is a solid or a liquid. Solids or liquids always never change the equilibrium. Only aqueous and gas do. So now let's look at how the equilibrium point shifts as we change the pressure or volume of an equation. So it's important to realize and remember that Boyle's law tells us that volume and pressure are interrelated. So when volume goes up, pressure goes down. And in vol when volume goes down, pressure goes up. So it's all connected. So now let's first look at how the equilibrium point shifts as volume goes down and pressure goes up. As volume goes down and pressure goes up, we know that the equilibrium point shifts to the side with the least dispersed molecules. So how do you determine how dispersed a side is? Well, all you have to do is add up the coefficients. So if you add up two and one here, you get three. And for the products, all you have to do is add two, so you get two. We see that two is less than three, which means that the products for this equation are less, not as dispersed as the reactants. So in this case, the equilibrium point would shift to the right. So now let's look at what happens when the volume goes up and the pressure goes down. So what happens is the exact opposite. The equilibrium point would shift to the side with the most dispersed molecules. So in this case here, it would shift to the left because three is greater than two, so it's more dispersed. The reactants are more dispersed than the products here. So it would shift to the side of the reactants. Now the scientific explanation for this is as you increase pressure, there are more collisions. So there's more of a chance that sodium and fluorine are gonna combine together to become sodium fluoride. So there are more collisions, so there's more of a chance that the forward reaction is gonna happen. So that's why it shifts to the right. But when we decrease pressure, there's less of a chance. There's a lower chance that they're gonna combine because there are less collisions. So what ends up happening is the rate of the forward reaction becomes slower. So the rate of the reverse reaction is faster than the rate of the forward reaction. And that's why it shifts to the left because the rate of the reverse reaction is now suddenly a lot faster than the rate of the forward reaction. It's decomposing faster than it's being composed. So now let's look at how the equilibrium point shifts as we change the temperature of an equation. Now to fit this situation, I've changed the equation to an exothermic one where it produces heat. But to really understand this and to simplify this concept down, we should just look at this 22.0 kilocalories of heat as just another product. So we can interpret this as sodium plus fluorine equals to sodium fluoride and heat. So basically, sodium fluoride and heat combine to make sodium and fluorine, while sodium and fluorine combine to make sodium fluoride and heat. So let's first look at what happens when we increase temperature. As we increase temperature, if we look at it as just another product, we know that suddenly we have more heat to combine with sodium fluorine fluoride, which means there's more of a chance that the reverse reaction is going to happen. The reverse reaction is suddenly faster than the forward reaction because there's more heat to combine with sodium fluoride. So because of this, we say that the equilibrium shifts to the left 
because it can be sh the reverse reaction is faster than the forward reaction. Now what happens when we decrease temperature? Now as we decrease temperature, if we look at it as just another product, we suddenly don't have as much temp heat to combine with sodium fluoride in order to create sodium and fluorine. So because of this, we know that the reverse reaction has suddenly been a lot slower than the forward reaction, which means that the equilibrium shifts to the right as a result because the reverse reaction is slower because there's not as much heat to combine with sodium fluoride to create sodium and fluorine. So here's the easy sheet for Le Chatelier's principle. This is basically a sheet of paper to help you guys study for all your tests, quizzes, and stuff like that in an easier fashion to help you guys memorize the concepts really quickly. So we're going to go over the easy sheet for a quick review. So we know that Le Chatelier's principle basically states that a system at an equilibrium, equilibrium means the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse, shifts its equilibrium point in response to stress. Now we know that one type of stress is concentration, and we know that when we add reactants, it moves to the right, and we add products, it moves to the left, the equilibrium point. And the opposite for when you remove reactants, it goes to the left, and when you remove products, the equilibrium point shifts to the right. Now for pressure and volume, we remember that Boyle's Law basically tells us that volume and pressure have an inverse relationship. When volume is down, pressure goes up, and vice versa. So when volume goes up, pressure goes down. Now when pressure is up, we know that the equilibrium point shifts to the side with the least dispersed molecules, so the side with the lower coefficient. And when pressure goes down, we know that the equilibrium point shifts to the side with the most dispersed molecules, or the side with the higher coefficient. And for temperature, we know that when we add temperature, it goes to the equilibrium point goes to the side that doesn't have heat, and when you remove temperature, the equilibrium point shifts to the side with the with heat. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe.